What is a labyrinth and why is it important for storytellers to understand? Storytellers have been using labyrinths for thousands of years. A labyrinth is a maze that may be circular, it may be square, but it has passages that always have a singular goal, and that is to move you towards the center. Now, just as we see in the hero's journey, it's one thing to get to the center of a labyrinth. However, we have to get back out. And so there's one journey that takes us to the center of a labyrinth, and there's an entirely different journey sometimes that will take us back out. We encounter the labyrinth at different times and myth and history, and the first very popular labyrinth story is about Theseus and the Minotaur. And of course, the Minotaur is waiting at the center of the labyrinth for Theseus, and we uh, those of you that uh, like the, the, the story of uh, uh, Theseus or are familiar with the myth know that in order to help Theseus get back out, Ariadne ties a ball of yarn or ties yarn to his foot. So as he ventures through the labyrinth and makes it to the center of the labyrinth and defeats the Minotaur, he then can find his way back out by tracing the yarn. There's a number of things about this story that I think are compelling to us as humans, but also it, it becomes an archetypal story in and of itself and that I think we keep telling this story over and over again. We could even say it's a certain version of the hero's journey traveling to the center of the labyrinth and then having to bring the boon or the defeat of what's at the center of the labyrinth back out of the labyrinth. Now, why is that significant to us? I would suggest that is significant to us because it mirrors the process of all of us going inside of ourselves defeating that which may lie at the very center of ourselves, and then finding a way back out to live in the world with others. This is a constant process. Carl Jung called it the individuation process, how we fully become ourselves. But the labyrinth, the maze, it speaks to this mystery of internal work, an internal journey. And it puts it in a physical space. It's interesting that um, uh, we, we see the labyrinth not just in history and myth, but we find the labyrinth in physical spaces. In France, there's a beautiful cathedral in Chartres. And this cathedral has an amazing labyrinth on the floor still to this day. It's a Christian church, and yet at the center of the labyrinth, we see an image of the Minotaur. It leads us to believe that perhaps this idea is something common to religious traditions and experiences of spirituality throughout history, throughout time, across geography. That maybe there's something in walking a labyrinth that allows us to experience something that we can't quite put into words. Maybe there's something connected to that ritual that connects us to that which is beyond. The power of walking the labyrinth became so profound at different times in history that people who were unable to physically go and walk a labyrinth would be given the opportunity by tracing the labyrinth on a wall with their finger. There was a recognition that there was something powerful there that may not be something that we fully understand or can put into words. There's actually been a resurgence of people walking labyrinths both in this country and around the world. And they can't always put their finger on what that experience does for them. Maybe it's as simple as this. Walking the labyrinth mirrors the journey of walking through life that we have. And compressing that into a small space 
into a small time, a small experience. It affords us the opportunity to try on a micro level to create some sense of, of meaning or some sense of understanding that we don't always get as we travel through the much larger labyrinth of life. How would you contrast labyrinths to mazes? Mm, yeah. So mazes and labyrinths often get used uh, with the same uh, descriptors. And in many cases, people say they're the same thing. However, there, there is a, an important difference uh, in a maze in a labyrinth if we look at the, um, uh, the, the, the technical descriptors that make one thing a maze and another thing a labyrinth. A labyrinth has passages that lead to the center, and that is always where we will end up. A maze will have dead ends that sometimes we can't find our way forward and we have to return back the way we came through. A labyrinth will always have a way forward where a maze will have dead ends. This, of course, is important to recognize that in life, we often are stuck in a maze, but we're looking and hoping for a labyrinth. What mythological connections do labyrinths and mazes have? There are a number of myths that bring up labyrinths and mazes. However, labyrinths seem to have a greater presence in mythical stories. The story of Theseus, of course, is the, the most known and the most famous. However, it is not the only myth that has the involvement of a labyrinth. To go outside of the Western Greek tradition and to even perhaps predate some of that, we see within uh, the Hindu tradition this idea of what was called the thread spirit. And the thread spirit in many ways was manifest in a spider's web. And if you think about a complete spider's web, it looks a lot like a labyrinth. So there were a great deal of um, uh, conversations or, or, or people interested in the spider's web perhaps being um, something that was uh, 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 sacred, especially because the entire spider's web comes out of the spider itself. It comes out of the spider's body. And the spider and the web end up having a lot of presence within mythological stories. Perhaps my favorite um, uh, spills over from Hindu traditions into West African mythology, and it's the story of Anansi. And in West African myth, we find Anansi the spider constructing this web, this labyrinth that we, he hangs stories upon. And Anansi in West African myth was also responsible for convincing the gods to give humankind stories. The, the gods kept all the stories in the world in a large box, and Anansi tricks the gods into pouring the box out on the world, and the stories are given to human beings, and Anansi begins to put the stories on the web. Now, what do we take from that? Well, we begin to see perhaps there's some relationship between the labyrinth of mystery and finding our way through and the various stories that are associated with different parts of the labyrinth. Maybe this story gives us insight into navigating this part of the labyrinth, and this story gives us insight into navigating this part of the labyrinth but the stories are connected to the labyrinth, which is connected to the mystery. 